Hello, everyone. Brittany and I are proud to join you today to celebrate our Kentucky artists. The arts play an important role in our culture and education. And during the last two years, the arts have helped us stay connected. From music via Zoom to the sidewalk chalk art of our kids or work done by professional artists, it's helped us during difficult times. And while the arts community has helped so many, we also recognize the hardships this community has faced during the pandemic. This is why my administration made it a priority to support Kentucky artists and arts organizations. We invested $1.7 million in federal funding to support the economic recovery of the arts, directly impacting 120 art organizations and 21 Kentucky artists. Andy and I also made it a priority to put the work of Kentucky artists on full display by launching the Team Kentucky Gallery in the state capitol. Now, when you walk through the halls of the People's House, the walls portray the story of Kentuckians. And in a few months, we'll pay tribute to the lives we lost through the pandemic through art as well. The unveiling of the Team Kentucky COVID-19 Memorial, designed by Lexington artist Amanda Matthews, will serve as an artistic reminder of our shared sacrifices to defeat COVID-19. But today, we come together to celebrate the arts by honoring the 2021 recipients of the Governor's Awards in the Arts. This is an opportunity for us to recognize the most talented, dedicated artists and arts organizations in Kentucky. The award pays tribute to artists, businesses, and arts organizations that exemplify what it truly means to be the best of Team Kentucky. The 2021 recipients represent a diversity of accomplishments in all areas of the arts. The combined achievements and contributions of this year's esteemed group of recipients also serves as a reminder of the many ways the arts impact Kentucky's cultural legacy. On behalf of all of us here at Team Kentucky, I want to congratulate each of you for taking your seat among the group of distinguished artists who have served as ambassadors of the arts. And thank you for sharing your artistic talent with all of us here in the Commonwealth. Today we come together to celebrate nine Kentuckians who have been designated to receive the 2021 Governor's Awards in the Arts. These prestigious awards represent the Commonwealth's tradition of honoring Kentuckians, businesses, and organizations for their significant contribution to the arts. Each recipient exemplifies diversity in the arts as well as the irreplaceable value that the arts play in contributing to our communities, education, and economy. The combined achievements of this year's esteemed group demonstrate the rich tradition of Kentucky's cultural legacy. Our honorees join a long list of distinguished recipients dating back to 1977, when this prestigious recognition first began. As an artist, your ability to dream and think outside the box has yielded solutions that have allowed the arts to thrive in our Commonwealth. So on behalf of the Tourism, Arts, and Heritage Cabinet, I join Governor Bashir and the Kentucky Arts Council in recognizing each of you for your creativity, your innovation, and your dedication. Thank you for sharing your talent with all of us and for continuing to tell the story of Kentucky through the arts. I want to thank Governor Bashir and Secretary Berry for their introductory remarks and take this opportunity to welcome you to this presentation, of the 2021 Governor's Awards in the Arts. I'm Chris Cathers, Kentucky Arts Council Executive Director and one of your Masters of Ceremonies for this awards ceremony. The Governor's Award in the Arts originated in 1977 with the presentation of the Milner Award named for Louisville utility executive and civic leader B. Hudson Milner. Over the decades, the awards program has expanded to the awards categories you will see represented today. Though we cannot gather in person as we usually do for this special day, we are excited that people across the Commonwealth and even across the country can share this day with the honorees. Each award presentation will include brief pre-recorded remarks from our award recipients. We'd like to thank them for taking this time to help us put the polish on this wonderful event. Another person we'd like to thank is the creator of the 2021 Governor's Awards in the Arts, Ann Clem of Fisherville, Kentucky. We'll take a moment before we begin the presentations to learn more about this artist and the award itself. 
Each year, the Kentucky Arts Council commissions a Kentucky artist to create the Governor's Awards in the Arts. The artist makes 10 awards, one for each recipient, and one for the Arts Council's permanent collection. The 2021 awards were created by Fisherville Glass artist Anne Klim. Inspired by science fiction, black holes, and nature's processes, Anne Klim's creations start with an idea and a design. Then comes the cut, cast, fold, grind, and polish. These steps give her a chance to explore the fluid forms of glass and how colors react with one another. Often beginning by creating the block of glass, either in the kiln or by laminating pieces together, she cold works the block to create the final sculpture. Other pieces are created by casting the glass in the kiln and allowing the glass to flow into a plaster mold. Folding glass is accomplished with multiple kiln firings and sandblastings to a single sheet of glass. In addition to the kilns, she employs a variety of grinding and cutting tools that use air, electric power, and of course, water. While making lots of sludge, beautiful sparkling and matte finish creations emerge. Anne says, being selected to create the Governor's Awards was a surprise and an honor, especially as I look back at previous Governor's Awards and the list of their creators. Diversity was a focus of her inspiration in creating the 2021 award, manifested in the textures and variety of colors evident in the award itself. For more information on Anne Clem and the Kentucky Governor's Awards in the Arts, visit the Kentucky Arts Council website, artscouncil.ky.gov. Hello, I'm Dr. Everett McCorvey, Director of UK Opera Theatre and Chair of the Kentucky Arts Council. I'm happy to be with you today for this presentation of the Governor's Awards in the Arts. We'll kick off our presentation with the Artist Award. This award category recognizes a lifetime of achievements in the arts by a Kentucky resident artist or group of artists in any discipline. This year's honoree is a musical group, the Northern Kentucky Brotherhood Singers, based in Covington. The ensemble's current members, Rick Jennings, Eric Riley, Stace Darden, Sam Watson Norris Jr., Mike Wright, and Luther Scruggs are part of a tradition that began 34 years ago when Rick Jennings formed the group. Since the beginning, this community-based quintet has sung in churches, at special gospel programs, anniversaries, song services, and other sacred music events. In any setting, the Brotherhood's performances inspire feelings of fellowship and recreate the jubilant atmosphere of their home church. In addition to continuing the traditional role of the gospel quartet, the Brotherhood reaches out to a global audience with both spiritual and secular songs. In addition to their performances here, the Brotherhood has become an annual hit in Spain and has traveled to Portugal, Italy, Switzerland, Canada, and Russia to perform. But today, we're honoring them here in Kentucky. I give you the Northern Kentucky Brotherhood Singers, the 2021 Governor's Awards in the Arts Artist Award winners. The singers are represented today by Rick Jennings, one of their members. Hello, my name is Eric Rick Jennings with the Northern Kentucky Brotherhood Singers. We thank God for providing a way for us to be successful through our families, our friends, our churches, our schools, our community organizations, as well as the Kentucky Arts Council, who played a major role as catalysts for over three decades with the resources that they poured into the Northern Kentucky Brotherhood Singers. We like to give a shout out to Bob Gates, who at that time was with the Kentucky Folklife, 
who initially introduced us to the Kentucky Arts Council. We are so deeply grateful to Governor Andy Beshear, to Mike Berry, to all of those with the Kentucky Arts Council who considered us to be recipients of this prestigious award. May God continue to bless those in the front and behind the scenes who are continuing to pour into the hearts of the people. God bless. Thank you, Rick, and the Northern Kentucky Brotherhood Singers. Our next category is the Business Award. This award honors a Kentucky business or business person for outstanding interest in and support of the arts. This year, we go to the western end of the Commonwealth to honor Paducah Bank. The bank's commitment to the arts is evident in its investment 20 years ago in the Artist Relocation Program. And that is just one example of Paducah Bank's service to creativity in its community. Paducah Bank consistently provides both financial support and professional mentorship to aspiring artist entrepreneurs, which means a lot because what it takes to start an arts business is different from the startup of more conventional businesses that offer goods and services. The list of local arts organizations supported by Paducah Bank includes the Paducah Symphony Orchestra, the Iser Arts Center, the Carson Center for the Performing Arts, Market House Theater, the Clemens Center at West Kentucky Community and Technical College, Lower Town Arts Association, the Lower Town Arts and Music Festival, the National Quilt Museum, and Maiden Alley Cinema. On a larger scale, Paducah Bank has also been a proud supporter of Kentucky Humanities, specifically the Chautauqua program, which brings historically accurate dramatizations of famous Kentuckians into schools across the state. Several Paducah Bank employees serve on the boards of local arts organizations, and some employees are artists themselves, performing in the theater productions or with the Paducah Symphony. Add that all together, and it is apparent that Western Kentucky has a true friend of the arts in Paducah Bank. It's my pleasure to present to you the 2021 Governor's Awards in the Arts Business Award recipient, Paducah Bank, represented today by its president, Marty Herndon. There is art in every endeavor, yes, even in banking. When local artists discovered a neighborhood in Paducah that was in disarray and literally falling apart, they put together a plan. The plan became known as the Lower Town Artist Relocation Program. The idea was to reimagine and repurpose these buildings, repurpose them into art studios and personal residences. Paducah Bank's commitment to this program and to this community has always been unwavering. It's been creative. It has been said that it takes courage to be creative, and I'm very proud of the courage that our company and our bank has always had to make a difference. Today, Paducah Bank believes in the power of the arts, just as we always have and always will. I describe our company as being unique and distinct, much like this beautiful Governor's Award for the Arts. We're truly grateful for the recognition of our commitment to creative placemaking and yes, the courage it takes to make a difference. Thank you, Marty. I'm Dior Cotton, Vice Chair of the Kentucky Arts Council. I'm honored to be involved in recognizing all of the outstanding awardees today and honored as well to serve on the Kentucky Arts Council Board. Let's move on to the Community Arts Award, which honors Kentucky individuals or organizations making a positive impact on their communities through the arts. We're proud to present this year's award to Butler County Arts Guild in Morgantown. After its founding in April 2013, Butler County Arts Guild's first project was a mural for Morgantown, designed by Western Kentucky artist and my friend, Andy Rudloff. That hands-on artist participation project inspired many to join the Guild and helped the organization grow its membership. Over the years, Guild activities have also grown, including the Music at the Mural Acoustical Jam Session, the West Ohio Street Chalk Art and Craft Festival, basket making classes, book signings, guitar and fiddle lessons, basic art classes, and a wealth of arts resources for the community. In 2016, the Guild obtained a building for office and exhibit space, 
Among the exhibits that have been in the Guilds Gallery are the Kentucky Arts Council's Makings of a Master Traveling Exhibit. The Guild also sponsors community activities like writers workshops and concerts. The Guild established a Junior Arts Guild which has produced its own art show. It's clear that the Butler County Arts Guild is committed to serving its community through the arts and that's why the organization is being honored today. Accepting the Governor's Awards in the Arts Community Arts Award are Roger Givens, President, and Karen Lane, Vice President of the Butler County Arts Guild. I'm Roger Givens, President of the Butler County Arts Guild. What an honor it is for us to receive this award. I'd like to thank Governor Andy Boucher, Kentucky Arts Council, the Kentucky Tourism Cabinet, Michael Berry, the City of Morgantown, the Butler County Fiscal Court, Butler County Tourism Commission, Richard Dick Dye and Renona Browning, Josh Hampton for founding the Butler County Arts Guild, Jim and Darlene Johnson for their generous donation that carried us through our first years. My name is Karen Lane and I've been an Arts Guild member for seven years. We believe a thriving arts community benefits us all in countless ways. It's an honor and a privilege to receive the Community Arts Award from the Commonwealth we love so much. Here's to a bright and creative 2022. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Roger, Karen, and the Butler County Arts Guild. Our next category is the Education Award. This award recognizes significant contributions in the arts in education and is awarded to a Kentucky individual, school, or organization. This year, that distinction goes to Jane Dewey of Danville. Jane is in her 22nd year as Danville Independent Schools Director of Arts Education and her 27th year as a teacher. Though she has been a driving force behind many arts initiatives, including co-founding the Frank X. Walker Literary Festival, initiating the Southeastern Theater Conference K-12 Teacher Institute, and hosting Yo-Yo Ma in her district's theater, it is her focus on providing students the opportunity to create, perform, respond, and connect in and with the arts that matters most. With her finger on the pulse of the state of arts education in Kentucky, Jane wears many hats. She is facilitator for the Kentucky Coalition for Arts Education and on the boards of the Kentuckians for the Arts and the Arts Center of the Bluegrass. She is also an adjunct instructor for Center College, a Kentucky Peer Advisory Network consultant for the Kentucky Arts Council, has taught for the Governor's Scholars Program, and has been an adjudicator for the Governor's School for the Arts. It is my honor to present the Governor's Award in the Arts Education Award to Jane Dewey. phone call from Chris Cathers saying that I was to be named this year's recipient of the Governor's Award in the Arts for Arts Education and my head just started spinning. It is an honor to be placed among a list of past recipients of this award and just as meaningful is that this award honors arts education in our state. Many thanks to Governor Andy Bashir, Cabinet Secretary Mike Berry, and to the Kentucky Arts Council for their ongoing support of this program. Special thanks to my nominators, to my colleagues from around the state and the region, to my colleagues in the Danville schools, to current and future arts educators and our students, to my past teachers, and to my friends and family for their unwavering support. Arts education is the soul of our schools, enriching students, teachers, and administrators. I am honored to accept this award in arts education for the work that I've done and will continue doing because arts education is essential for all students.
Thank you, Jane. The Governor's Awards in the Arts Folk Heritage Award is presented to an individual resident of Kentucky, an organization located in Kentucky, or an individual or organization closely related to Kentucky that has made an outstanding effort to perpetuate and promote Kentucky's unique artistic traditions. This year, that distinction goes to Sue Massick of Willisburg. Sue grew up in Kansas, where she began performing with her mother, singing old-time gospel music and songs handed down by generations of family musicians. But for more than 50 years, she has called Kentucky home. During that time, Sue toured throughout the United States, Canada, Italy, Guatemala, and Nicaragua as a solo artist and as a banjo player for the Real World String Band. 40 years real world performed from the coal fields of Appalachia to the Lincoln Center in New York City. The group was honored with the Kentucky Conference for Community and Justice 2011 Lauren K. Weinberg Humanitarian Award. Real World recorded seven albums. Sue was among the Kentucky Arts Council's first community scholars and a master artist recognized through the Arts Council's Folk and Traditional Arts Apprenticeship Program. She has been a teaching artist in Kentucky schools for more than 25 years. Before rising to the level of master artist, Sue was mentored by legendary Kentucky artists Lily Mae Ledford, Clyde Davenport, and Blanche Culveron. Though she is originally from the Midwest, Sue feels deeply devoted to Appalachia, its cultural heritage, and the people who live there. I'm pleased to present the Governor's Awards in the Arts Folk Heritage Award to Sue Massey. First of all, I would like to thank Governor Brashear and Tourism, Arts and Heritage Cabinet Secretary Barry for their commitment to the arts in Kentucky. And my deepest gratitude goes to the Kentucky Arts Council. They made it possible for me to share with thousands of students the richness of their Kentucky heritage. I'm also grateful beyond words that the wonderful women of Real World String Band were willing to share such a profound 40-year journey with me. Thanks also to the elders, including my own mother, who gave me the gifts, fiddle tunes, songs, and stories handed down through generations. Receiving the Governor's Folk Heritage Award tells me that my life's work is valued. And for all those who supported and encouraged me, who taught me and inspired me, it means that together we made a difference for the folk arts in Kentucky. Thank you, Sue. Our next award category is the Government Award. It recognizes significant support for the arts through government action and is awarded to an individual Kentucky resident or a government agency located in Kentucky. This year's Governor's Awards in the Arts Government Award goes to the city of Beaverdam. Located at the crossroads of Interstate 65 and the Western Kentucky Parkway, Beaverdam, a small rural community in Western Kentucky's Ohio County, is a leader in the region when it comes to the arts. The Beaver Dam Amphitheater, Community's Farmer's Market, and other annual events and festivals are shining gems and have received accolades from artists, industry professionals, locals, tourists, and media at the regional and national level. The success Beaver Dam has enjoyed is directly due to its unflinching commitment to supporting arts and entertainment and tourism-oriented projects and events. Beaver Dam and Ohio County have a rich, storied arts heritage. Beaver Dam is the home of the Crab family, including Grammy Award-winning Southern Gospel artist Jason Crab. Additionally, Ohio County is the birthplace of bluegrass legends Bill Monroe and Arnold Schultz. Beaver Dam has built upon these deep roots and is writing a new chapter in the arts every day. Accepting the Governor's Awards in the Arts Government Award on behalf of the city of Beaver Dam is Mayor Paul Sandifer. Hello, I'm Paul Sandifer, Mayor of Beaver Dam, Kentucky. On behalf of the City of Beaver Dam, the Beaver Dam Amphitheater, the Beaver Dam Tourism Commission, the Beaver Dam Farmers Market, 
and all citizens of Beaverdam, Kentucky, I am proud to accept this award. I would like to thank Governor Andy Bashir for his support of Beaverdam Amphitheater and our entire community. I would also like to thank Tourism, Arts, and Heritage Cabinet Secretary Mike Berry, as well as the Kentucky Arts Council for their support and for this recognition. The award recognizes the vision, determination, years of hard work, and steadfast commitment by city and community leaders. It also validates the investments the city and community have made towards arts and entertainment programming. This award acknowledges that even small, rural communities can have a major impact. We are honored to be selected for this prestigious award. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, Mayor Sandifer. The Governor's Awards and the Arts Media Award honors a Kentucky journalist or Kentucky-based media organization that has shown outstanding commitment to bringing the arts to the attention of the public. Louisville Public Media is an independent, community-supported, not-for-profit corporation serving its listeners with three distinct public radio stations and an investigative unit. 89.3 WFPL News Louisville, 90.5 WUOL Classical Louisville, 91.9 WFPK Independent Louisville, and the Kentucky Center for Investigative Reporting. Among its stellar reporting staff, Louisville Public Media has Kentucky's only remaining full-time arts and culture reporter. In a time when that position has been scaled back or eliminated in print, and broadcast newsrooms across the state, Louisville Public Media has made a commitment to retain that important beat. The network acknowledges that its listeners and readers are hungry for local arts coverage, and they engage with the newsroom directly, sharing stories on social media and signing up for Louisville Public Media's arts newsletter, arts cultural, etc. We're proud to present the Governor's Awards and the Arts Media Award the Louisville Public Media, represented by its president, Stephen George. We're so thrilled at Louisville Public Media to receive this honor. For decades, we've invested time, energy, creativity, and resources into fostering a strong arts community here in our city and across our state. Through our music stations, 90.5 WUOL Classical and 91.9 WFPK Independent, We've connected hundreds of thousands of Kentuckians with music, art, and community, all built on the idea that what we create can bring us together. At 89.3 WFPL, our daily local news station, we've dedicated ourselves to covering the arts in Kentucky as a news beat, helping ensure that the arts plays a critical role in our coverage. I wanna credit Stephanie Wolf, our arts and culture reporter, for the tremendous work she does on a daily basis in keeping Kentuckians informed about the latest in arts around our Commonwealth. I want to thank Governor Bashir for his support. I also want to thank Tourism, Arts, and Heritage Cabinet Secretary Mike Berry for his support, as well as the Kentucky Arts Council. And again, we are so grateful. Thank you, Stephen. The National Award is always an exciting category. This award is presented to a Kentucky native who has achieved national acclaim in the arts. Today, we honor Harlan County's own Martha Redbone, Martha Redbone is a vocalist, songwriter, composer, and educator. She is known for her music gumbo of folk, blues, and gospel from her childhood in Harlan County and fused with the eclectic grit of New York City where she now lives. Inheriting the powerful vocal range of her gospel singing African American father and the resilient spirit of her mother's southeastern Kentucky heritage, Martha broadens the boundaries of American roots music with songs and storytelling that share her life experience as an Afro-Indigenous woman and mother navigating the new millennium. Martha gives voice to issues of social justice, connecting cultures, and celebrating the human spirit. Martha's works are in partnership with long-term collaborator and husband, Aaron Whitby. As 2020 Drama Desk Award recipient for Outstanding Composer in a Play for Color Girls Who Have Considered Suicide, When the Rainbow is Enough, at New York City's Public Theater, other works include Bone Hill the Concert, a multidisciplinary theatrical concert touring nationally, the Talking Circles at the New York Theater Workshop, and Black Mountain Women currently in development at the Public Theater. 
Martha holds a special place in her heart for Kentucky, and this past summer was kind enough to spend time with host Shauna Morgan for the Kentucky Arts Council's six-part series titled Celebrating the Art and Culture of Kentucky. Some of the bluegrass is black. You can watch her interview along with the five other episodes on the Arts Council's YouTube page. But right now, let's hear from the honoree herself. We are proud to present the Governor's Awards in the Arts National Award to Harlan County native, Martha Redbone. I am so deeply humbled by this recognition. My Kentucky roots run all the way from Harlan County. This award means the world to me, and I dedicate this to my family. I couldn't be more proud and honored to represent my Kentucky heritage through music. I'd like to thank Governor Bashir for his support. I'd like to thank Tourism, Arts and Heritage Cabinet Secretary Mike Berry for his support, as well as the Kentucky Arts Council for this stunning, stunning award. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, Martha. We conclude the 2021 Governor's Awards in the Arts with the presentation of the Milner Award. As Chris mentioned earlier, the Milner Award was established in 1977 in honor of B. Hudson Milner, a Louisville utility executive and civic leader whose contributions to the arts in Kentucky remain important to this day. The Milner Award is presented to an individual Kentucky resident or organization located in Kentucky for outstanding philanthropic, artistic, or other contributions to the arts. The Milner Award is the most prestigious of the Governor's Awards in the Arts. We present this year's Milner Award to Dr. James M. Gifford. James is the CEO and senior editor of the Jesse Stewart Foundation, a nonprofit publishing organization established in 1979 to manage Stewart's literary estate and to promote educational and cultural programs relevant to the late author's life and works. James has won professional awards as a teacher, author, editor, and publisher. He and his small staff have published more than 155 books, including Appalachian Classics from Alan W. Eckerd, Billy C. Clark, Harry M. Cottle, Thomas D. Clark, Loyal Jones, Edwina Pendarvis, and of course, Jesse Stewart. James has made more than 500 public presentations and published more than 50 magazine and journal articles, along with hundreds of newspaper articles. In the last decade, James has authored or edited eight books, including biographies of Jesse Stewart and a biography of Sergeant Willie Sandlin, the only Kentuckian to receive the Medal of Honor during World War I. For more than four decades, James has played a leadership role in promoting the history, literature, and culture of Appalachia. In the late 1970s, he declined an editorial appointment at Yale University because of his commitment to the people and institutions of Appalachia. In a recent article, James reflected on his life's work, saying, the Jesse Stewart Foundation has become a sensitive interpreter of the hopes, dreams, and accomplishments of a great regional people. We have become your voice, too, speaking your unspoken thoughts, dreaming with you about things you have never hoped to realize, and stirring ambitions within you that had long been dormant in your soul. That's what books do. It is my pleasure on behalf of Governor Andy Bashir to present the 2021 Milner Award to Dr. James M. Gifford.
Thank you, Governor Bashir, Kentucky Arts Council, and Cabinet Secretary Mike Berry. In my 77th year, the Milner Award is the capstone of my professional career as an author, educator, and publisher. I proudly accept it on behalf of our board of directors, authors, staff, and many, many supporters. My special thanks go to Ashland Oil and Moorhead State University for support during the early years of my work. I dedicate this award to my late grandmother, Clara Moore Clark, who took in and raised two homeless little boys. Everything that I have ever done that is of value is a tribute to her. Thank you, Dr. Gifford. And thanks to Dr. Everett McCorvey and Dior Cotton for sharing in this presentation today. We value your leadership on the Kentucky Arts Council Board and are grateful for your time and service. A big thanks to our recipients for contributing to this celebration and for your work in and support of the arts in Kentucky. Congratulations on your many achievements. Thank you to the viewing audience for joining in today and cheering on the award recipients. We hope you've enjoyed the program. Of course, we owe our thanks to Governor Bashir and Secretary Barry for supporting this program. And thanks to the Tourism, Arts, and Heritage Cabinet Communications team and the Kentucky Arts Council staff for producing this video presentation. We'll be archiving this video on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, and you can access those at these links. Thank you for watching, and once more, congratulations to the recipients of the 2021 Governor's Awards in the Arts.